Well, Happy New Year, Tove Church. It's been a great year. God has been so faithful. God has been so good to our church family. If you notice, uh, we're, we're not at the fire hall in South Fayette, but we are at the old schoolhouse in Bethel Park, PA. This is where it all started three years ago with maybe 10 people going through books of the Bible. And this is where God did his work, where he brought people into a place where we had no heat, no ceilings, no walls, no floor no AC, just a Bible and some chairs, and people kept on coming, and even, this is one of the three rooms, if you remember, it was kind of a, a reshuffling the deck every Sunday, be, depending on which room was available, but it was in this room that we held some of our Bible studies and some of our services where God did a work, and just for us to remember where we started and to see where God has brought us now, it is an only God, even if I want to take credit for it, I can't kind of things that God has done through this church. So just in 2022, friends, uh, we have baptized over 30 people. In addition, as you know, we did this big salt and light initiative where we were asking our people to give towards helping some families in the area, in the community with either Christmas presents or utility bills or backed up rent. And you guys gave, right? Just in a matter of three weeks, you guys gave over 20 $21,000, and we were able to help eight families in need in the Christmas season. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being the best people, for being the most generous people, for being easy to love, for being easy to lead. We love you. In addition, there's been so much life change. Let me just share two quick stories. Just a few weeks back during our Christmas series, a lady came up. It was her first time visiting Tove. Her name was Linda, I think, and she came up after the service and said, I got saved today. I accepted Jesus today. And it was the most amazing thing that Mari and I, we got to pray with her, pray for her, that she came into Tov as an enemy of God and she left being a daughter of God. That's what God does. He turns enemy into family, that he doesn't hire employees. He adopts kids and he adopted Linda on that Sunday as his daughter. That's amazing. In addition, I had a lady come up to me and tell me that one of the reasons she comes to Tov is that for the first time in her life, and she's 60 plus years old, that she finally believes and, and, and feels forgiven, which is, that's amazing, right? So that's two stories out of many of all that God is doing through, in and through the Tove Church family. And I'm just convinced, friends, that 2023, Jesus is going to do some cool things and he's going to continue to save lives. He's going to continue to restore marriages. He's going to continue to alter some legacies in our church. And so it is the new year. It is 2023. And like every year, when we hit a new year, the good news is that most everybody, they're really ready and they're eager to make some significant changes in their life. This whole new year, new me thing, right? Like gym, eating healthy, whatever that is. But here's the bad news is that you realize that when you are on a steady diet of just self-help, and no God help, you realize it's not really helpful at all, right? And, and we talked about this a few weeks ago during our Christmas series, uh, that the culture's mantra, our culture's message pretty much is that what you do determines who you are, that your activity determines your identity, what you drive determines who you are, how much you make determines who you are, what career you have determines who you are, what kind of lifestyle you have determines who you are, that if we do good enough, if we make ourselves better, then we can become good people. But here's what we believe. We believe the Bible and the gospel message is the opposite, that who you are actually determines what you do, that your identity actually determines your activity. And I just believe, and I believe it's biblical, that the best way that people actually change from the inside out, it's not based on what you do, but it's being informed and knowing who you are and you are living your life from that identity and not living your life for an identity. Uh, let me say it the way that Paul says it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 
Hear me, friends, the essence of changing is not working harder to change your old self, but in being recreated into a new self as you are united with Jesus. Let me say that again. The essence of changing is not you working harder to change your old self, but it is in being recreated into a new self by being united with Jesus. That is not about becoming a better version of yourself, but letting Jesus make a new version of you and letting that inform your life. Again, letting who you are in Christ determine what you do for Christ in life. So before I get into this message, I want to set that as a clear, firm foundation that everything I'm about to talk about moving forward is going to be informed by your identity and not for an identity. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to be living in the book of Proverbs for the remainder of this message the book of Proverbs, in essence, it is wisdom literature uh, that it's not a book of promises per se, but it's a book of probabilities, right? It, it, just imagine a dad walking with his boy and just giving him some wisdom, like, son, if you do this, you should breed this result. That, that's what the book of Proverbs is. So I have five points of wisdom for us as we enter into 2023. Number one, I'm calling it God's plan over my plan. God's plan over my plan. Proverbs 19.21 says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. In addition, Proverbs 16.9, the heart of a man plans his ways, but the Lord establishes his steps. Right, so come the new year, people are planning, and some of you are planners, Right, like Excel gets you excited. You you already have your year 2023 planned out and it's January 1st. And hear me, planning is not bad. I'm just saying plan in pencil and not in permanent marker, if that makes sense. Because here's the deal. Ultimately, you and I, we don't know the future and we don't really have to know the future, but we have to know the one who does. And his name happens to be Jesus. So even in this new year, the, our, our message will never change. It's always going to be about Jesus, whether it's 2023 or 2027. The message will remain. It is all about Jesus and he knows the destiny for your life. So please plan, but plan with an open hand. That is God's plan, not my plan, and we get in trouble when we make it our plan instead of God's plan. Number two, uh, God's will versus God's timing. Uh, I, I think we got to know that there is a difference between God's will and God's timing, that we are called to be prepared, hear me, to find God's will, but be patient to his timing. Right? The example that I like to use all the time is, is King David. Right? King, the, the will for David was that he was going to be the king of Israel. He was anointed at the age of maybe 12, 13 years old. That was God's will. You're going to be king. God's timing was 20 plus years. Right? But those 20 plus years, hear me, was never wasted. It was used to build his character and build his reliance on God. So it is with us. Right, God's will for your life may be this, but his timing may be different. And for many of us, we suddenly think that must not be God's will because it is not happening at the speed and the rate the way that I wanted to, when in essence, that timing, that season of waiting is used to build your character like David, to build your reliance on God so that when that will, his will comes to fruition, that your character can match that calling and match that will that God has for your life. Right, Proverbs 16.3 says it this way, commit your work to the Lord and your plans, not maybe or should be, and your plans will be established. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Hear me, some of you don't need to work harder. Some of you need to pray longer. Some of you don't need to bear under the burden of whatever you're bearing under. Some of you just need to transfer that burden to God and let his shoulders bear the burden that your shoulders were never meant to bear, right? And so hear me, a lot of this time in this waiting for God's timing practically is spent in prayer, right? Prayer is something that we get to do. It's us getting to talk to our Father. Uh, And the Father who's not putting up with us, but his ears open and he wants to hear 
from his children. I always tell people, if you want to get better at prayer, don't focus on prayer. Get to know your dad. And once you get to know your dad as a loving, affectionate father, suddenly prayer becomes a little bit more organic, a little bit more natural to ask your dad whatever you want to, to, to tell him all of your hurts and your longings because he is a dad who loves you. But as we communicate in prayer with the living God, with the God of the universe who created the cosmos and yet wants to hear from his kids, when we do that, what happens is we receive God's vision of what is to come in our lives and then we receive God's provision, right? I need to make this clear, friends, especially in 2023, uh, God does not bless your plan. God only blesses your obedience to his plan. I'll say that again. God will not bless your plan. He will only bless your obedience, my obedience, our obedience to his plan. Right? God is not your employee. He's your Lord. And sometimes I think we have this wonky faith where we think, in essence, we never say it, but I'm the employer, God is my employee, this is a vision I have for my life, this is my plan, and God, I need you to execute my plan, right? And we never say it, but let me just be clear, God is God, he is Lord, he's not our employee, that we would be submitting to his plan so that he would bless his plan, not our plan. I hope that made sense, right? And hear me, in addition, I need you to know in, in, in light of all of this, that we as Christians and we at Tove Church, we do believe that there is a seen realm that we see right now, but there's also an unseen realm that we do not see, where there are divine beings, right? There are divine angels that are at work, and, and when we submit to His plan and action and through prayer, this is an amazing part. In prayer, we, we get to tap into the unseen realm, and then we get to get the resources of the unseen realm and bring them into the seen realm. This is amazing. So even right now, friends, Jesus is being worshipped as King and as Lord in the unseen realm. Revelation 5 talks about that when we sing and when we pray, they, it goes beyond the ceiling of our church, and it goes into the unseen realm. So hear me, you may have a vision for here, but the provision comes from there, right? We may have a vision for here for 2023, but the provision comes from there in the unseen realm. And when we pray, when we submit, that's the amazing part. We get to really tap in to that unseen supernatural realm where sometimes I've seen it where the supernatural supersedes the natural and God can still do those things, Tovchers. Do you believe that? Number three, in addition, uh, my plan within God's plan, right? So I, I know number one, I says not my plan, but God's plan to, to plan in pencil, but we do need to plan, right? Proverbs 12, 20 says it this way, uh, deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. I'll say that again. Proverbs 12, 20, deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. Here's what this means, friends. Godly people and evil people both make plans. Godly people and evil people both make plans. The question is not, will you plan? The question is, how will you plan? Do you know that Satan has a plan? And if you don't plan for your life, Satan has a plan for your life, right? Hear me, Jesus wants to bless you. Satan wants to undermine every blessing, right? Jesus wants to give you life. Satan wants to destroy your life. So friends, please have a plan, but make sure God is in that plan, that we never go ahead of God, but we also don't put our heels down. Right? Uh, my, my pastor used to always say, like, uh, work and plan as it depends on you, but pray like it depends on God. Right? So my plan within God's plan, in addition, Proverbs 21.5, it says the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only into poverty. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty 
who doesn't plan, who just goes by whatever comes in the name of faith, leads only to poverty. So friends, we're called to plan. I know some of you hearing this, we either lean one way or the other. Some of you are planners. Like I said, you, you're, you're planning your life now. You take notes. You have spreadsheets. You have charts. Uh, and some of you aren't planners at all. You just kind of go with the flow because you have faith. Both extremes are not helpful. It's somewhere in the middle where we do plan because God calls us to plan, but we do plan kind of with an open hand. All right? I hope that makes sense. Number four, God's plan, friends, involves God's people. God's plan must involve God's people. Proverbs eleven fourteen. Where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. Where there is no guidance, you're going to fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is safety. Friends, you, I, we need other godly people in, their, in our lives, rather. That God's will for our lives, God's plan for us involves other godly people. And it's not just any people. They are godly people, people who love you, who care for you, who pray for you, who love you enough to rebuke you, to put their thumb in your back. I tell people all the time, if, if nine out of ten of your godly friends tell you, like, Frank, you have a tail, that the least I need to do is at least check the mirror to see if I have a tail, that we need godly people in our lives. And you notice Proverbs 11 says, in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. So it's more than one person. So let, let me just briefly hit on what's called the mentor myth. There is this myth, I think, even within the church, uh, that you just have to find that one mentor, that one person who has all the answers to all the issues, to all the questions in your life. And if you can just get coffee with that person once a month, then everything in your life will all be answered. Everything in your life will flow better. All the answers will be answered. All the issues will be resolved. But that's just not the case. There's only one person that can do that. His name is Jesus. The rest of us, we're all flawed. Right? It says the abundance of counselors. My pastor used to always say, think of it as a bullpen for a baseball team. Right? There, there's left-handed pitchers, there's right-handed pitchers, there's the, the curveball person, the, the fastball person, the knuckleball person, depending on who the batters are in the same way that we would have abundance of mentors or abundance of counselors in your life. Like there's this, this guy who's great at finance. So I'm going to go to him with financial questions to, to get mentored financially. This couple, their marriage is awesome. So I'm going to go to them with some marriage counsel or marriage advice. This couple, they're great at parenting, right? So to have a bullpen, per se, of people in your life where you can go to when the issues arise, but to expect one person to fulfill all of that for you is unrealistic and is not possible, and only Jesus can really do that, that even the best person makes a bad Jesus, right? The best person makes a horrible Jesus. I think sometimes for us, unintentionally, we give Jesus' resume to other people and say, I need you to solve all of my issues. I need you to have all the answers. And we realize when we do that, we set them up to fail and we set ourselves up to be sorely disappointed. So that, again, you have an abundance of people in your life that you can go to regarding whatever issue you're going through in that moment. Lastly, friends, uh, God's plan requires my work, right? Proverbs 14, 23, it says, in all toil, in all work, in all grinding it out, there is profit, but mere talk tends only to poverty. This is a world we are living in. Everybody talks about things. Everybody talks about somebody else doing something wrong that they're not doing anything about. This is the world we live in, like social media, blogs, everything. Is everybody talking about what they want to do? Everybody talking about what someone else is not doing right or how they would do it? And, and, and this is saying that in all toil, there needs to be some work. The gospel causes us to work, not just work, but to work hard. 
Again, not so that we can have an identity, but because we already have an identity of son of God, daughter of God, child of God, that compels you to work hard, that Christians should be the best, most hardworking employees, that if God has given you a vision for 2023, hear me, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to work hard and not just sit on your couch and say, hey, if God wills it, then he's going to do it. That's a cop-out. You guys know this, that you're going to have to work hard again. We work hard because we are saved, not so that we can be saved. We work hard because we are new in Christ, not so that we can be new in Christ, right? Back to the beginning of the message. The foundation is our identity determines our activity, right? So in 2023, as we think about my plan, submits under God's plan, that God's plan involves God's people, that God's plan involves hard work, where all of these things, it's under the umbrella of you are a child of God, you are new in Christ, you are loved by God, you are accepted by God, you are embraced by God. If that's true, man, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to pursue God's people, I'm going to plan with an open hand, and know that even though I don't know the future, I do know and have submitted to the one who does his name is Jesus. So in the new year, let me ask you a question. Do you know Jesus? Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you given your sins to Jesus? Have you given your legacy to Jesus? Because he is the only one that knows you and loves you and has a great plan for you. If we will be humble to submit to his plan, knowing that his plan is the best plan for my life. Tove Church, I love you, and man, I'm just convinced that 2023 is going to be a momentous year for our church family. Uh, I, I believe that God is going to do some amazing things. You know, as you know, we're searching for a space, and we haven't come across that yet, but that's okay. Right? I, I look at God's track record for Tove. He's pulled through every single time. He's, giving, he, he's given me no reason to doubt him now, right? So again, God's will, God's timing. Like I said, God's will, I believe, is for us to have a permanent space that we can call home. God's timing, I don't know, right? But in the meantime, we're going to be patient and we're going to grow in areas we need to grow. Uh, we're, we're going to just mature in areas we need to mature so that when we do get that building in his perfect timing, we're going to be ready, right? And so, friends, I, I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for calling Tove Church your home. Uh, you know, Mari and I, we talk about this often. Uh, it, it is amazing uh, to know where we started and to see where we are now and even to, to, I told my wife a few weeks ago, like, it, it actually worked. I know that sounds funny, but I mean, there is absolutely the sense of a little bit of relief, like it actually worked. The Bible actually works. The Holy Spirit, he's actually alive, right? And, and God actually honors the preaching of his word. So again, friends, I love you. I pray for you often, uh, and we are just so eager and so excited and so expectant uh, of what Jesus will do in this year to come. Would you pray with me? Hey, Father, we thank you um, for this church family. Um, God, I know as a pastor, I am just filled with a ton of gratitude um, for all that you've done. As I stand here in the very space where this all started, it is just mind-blowing to see the work that you've done. Uh, that I, I'm not the leader of this. I'm the follower, and you are the leader. And I pray that that would always be the order of things. And so, God, I pray for our dear, dear people um, that in this new year, that you would make yourself more clearly known to them, um, that their affections for you would grow, uh, their desire to read the book that you wrote would grow, that their desire to, to pray to a father who wants to hear from them would grow, all, all because they get to do it, not because they have to do it. And God, we, we also pray for this new year, uh, 2023, uh, that you would do a work in the hearts of our people. Um, God, we have, we have so many kids. We just had 70 kids a few Sundays back, 
And Lord, I remember when we were thrilled when we had that many people total at Tove, and the fact that we have 70 just kids and that we have about not 10 ladies who are pregnant about to give birth. It just brings me so much joy that we just have not just older saints, but, but younger saints, and we have saints to come, uh, that this church would be a church where uh, generations could be altered because of your gospel. So God, we thank you, thank you, thank you for being our God and for loving us and for being faithful to us even when we are faithless. And we are, again, eagerly expectant to see all the work that you do as we follow you, as we follow your will, as we follow your plan. And we pray this, Jesus, in your good name. Amen.